The glorious Quran says a life of righteousness is the only way to go to heaven. The essential vase known as the vase of righteousness is found in chapter 2 of the Holy Quran. Lectures have been delivered at the Nigda Center this Sunday, August 22, 2021, describing righteous men and their reward in this world and the hereafter. The intention behind the lecture and the willing to do this came from realizing that the goal of all Muslims and every Muslim is to attain Jannah. But how do we attain Jannah and what is awaiting for us in Jannah? You know, many times people, when they hear about how to get into something and what they're going to benefit from it, they want to do it. So this is why I chose the theme about the description of righteous women and righteous men. Because only righteous women and righteous men are going to get into Jannah, you know. So Jannah being the goal and the objective, I wanted to present how are the people, what is the description of those, of those people that are going to go into Jannah and what is the reward that is waiting for them because Jannah as we said is the, the goal and that's where we want, to, we want to be. Muslims have been commanded by the Supreme Creator to adopt the lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him who was sent as a mercy for mankind. That way men can better play the vital role in their respective families for an ideal society. A righteous man as a husband. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the one hadith concerning the way a man should be. He said, Ali salatu was salam, khayrukum khayrukum li ahli. Wa ana khayrukum li ahli. To the man, the person who is considered a righteous man, he is generally the one who is good to his family. And there is no other best way to do it. The Prophet ﷺ, he is well known to have very concise wordings, but they have very far reaching meanings. So when he says that the best of you is the one that is best to your family. And as we said in the lecture, the note or the mark that your family gives you, your wife and your children give you, this is your true mark. Because at the outside of the house, you might act like you're a good person or you might act like you're a righteous person. But the people that know you the best is your wife and your, and your children. And you can't lie to them. They sleep with you, they stay with you, they eat with you. They with you in the house. You can't hide from them. So the righteous man in Islam is the one who is, who is generally good to his, to his family. Nowadays, we live in a society where people do not want to learn before practicing. The level of ignorance amongst Muslims is a major source of marital problems. The source of every evil is ignorance. If you look at shirk, for example, worshipping other than Allah, or worshipping Allah and worshipping other than him as well, or, you know, associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jalla, it comes from ignorance. If the people had true knowledge of who the Creator is, they would and they worship Him, you know, the best way. If the people had knowledge of Islam, of the Sunnah, they would practice it. So the person is always an enemy of what they don't know, of what they are ignorant of. So if a man wants to take a second wife, then he has to learn how to handle it. There's a, a well known book of Sheikh uh, Al Rajahi, and he entitled it Al Tariq Al Muthla. The best way to inform your first wife of your second marriage. And in his book, he tells you how do you do it? How do you act? How do you tell your wife? And if she's angry, how do you deal with the situation? So knowledge is very important in this issue. And the people are not handling or they're not doing polygyny properly because of lack of, of knowledge. But now, because of their lack of knowledge or because they're doing it wrong, does that mean the Sharia is wrong now? We don't say that. But we say that the men who are not seeking knowledge and they're not seeking the proper way to do it, they are to blame. They are to blame. And the Sharia stays. And it's perfect. Yes, Islam permits polygamous marriage, but insufficient Islamic knowledge demonstrated by some husbands give a negative impression about it to the society. The Sharia came and explained to us how do you handle it and how you don't handle it. The general way to do it is to be fair between your wives. Generally fair. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as he said in the Quran وَلَن تَسْتَطِيعُ وَن تَعْدِلُ بَيْلِ النِّسَاءِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتُمْ You're not going to be able to have adil, to have justice between your wife even if you want to. And here the scholars they mention this is about the love of the heart. So a man cannot be blamed about the way he loves the wives. He's always going to love someone better, more. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and Hajjah radiallahu ta'ala anha they were the two best or the two most loved wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but the other wives, they knew this. Do we say that Prophet ﷺ couldn't handle, you know, handle his wife? No, that's not the reason why. That's not how you say it. As for the apparent 
care that a man is supposed to have between his wife, then it's about justice. It has to be a relationship of justice. So we don't say and we don't blame polygamy for what the people are doing. We don't blame the Sharia, the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of what the people are doing. And just because they're not doing it well, that doesn't mean other people are not doing it well as well. And just because they're not doing it well, that does not mean it becomes haram and it becomes something that is not permissible and disliked. That's not the point. The best example of the is, is the Prophet And if a person does polygyny and he marries more than one woman and he's treating them the way the Prophet and the way the Sharia asks him to do it, then he's handling it. As for the person who is not doing so, we say that he's not handling it and the Sharia stays. The Sharia gave us the way. How do we do it? If you apply it, then Alhamdulillah. If you don't apply it, then we don't say that the Sharia is wrong. We don't say that, no, you can't marry two women because many men, they do this and they do that. No. Because at the end of the day, there are men who do it properly. And we find it. This is something that is, real, is, is, is a reality. From the time of the Prophet to the companions, still our day is here. There's some women that they actually look for a second wife for their husbands. So how are those women? Are they stupid? Are they dumb? They're not stupid and they're not. Because they know the husband is a good man. He's a good person. And yeah, and he, he's handling it. So handling it is not what the people think. It's not what the people wish. No, it's about what the Sharia tells, what is handling and what's not handling. No wonder why the late Sheikh Ahmad Didad said the greatest enemy of Islam is that ignorant Muslim whose ignorance leads him to intolerance. And when he behaves, people think Islam is what he is. There is the need to seek for knowledge. Frankly speaking, personally, I am very, very impressed with the presentation that my brother Sheikh Abu Adam Nuruddin Al Khalawi has given to us the Nigda family. He has elaborated many ways that we can understand how you can make yourself a righteous Muslim that can attend that paradise. Uh, many of the things that uh, we do not even say to that level, he has uh, tailored everything uh, to our ears. He has talked previously, talk about the righteous women and their reward in this in life and uh, in the hereafter, as well as the one today, the description of righteous men and uh, their reward in this life and the hereafter. I wish Allah should reward him a lot and the uh, women and men that uh, attend here. I saw the smiling faces from them, meaning that most of the burden that they have are thrown into the garbage today. Participants in this hall will never remain the same in their ways of reasoning and behavior. It was a very nice conference. At least we the men, we understood our role in our homes. We understood how we are going to deal with our women. At least a Muslim man supposed to be humble in his home. He's, he's supposed to treat his children well, supposed to behave well in the society. We understood there are the categories of people that Allah will admit in Jannah. Our ultimate end on earth is that we seek the Jannah paradise when we finally quit this world. And this is most, it's very important for us to know the, the qualities or the tools we need, what we need to have to merit the Jannah. Because it's not simply by the fact that the first fact we're living on earth that we're guaranteed it. We need to know what you need to possess as qualities. Just like anybody who aspires to have a job should know the qualification that's needed for that particular job. This is really uh, the essence of this of today. And the focus was on us, the men, uh, because in the previous session we already saw uh, qualities of a good, righteous women and their reward in paradise. And today uh, the brother concentrated more on men, trying to know what are the qualities, what are the what qualification does a man need to be able to say, if I die today, I die entertaining a hope of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Muslims' families are headed by righteous men, then an ideal ummah would be established and most societal problems would be addressed naturally.